Hello guys, my name is Kieran Lee and today I'm going to be baking an apple and grape crumble. Uh, it's not my own recipe, it's a Claire Sattis recipe. She is one of my favourite bakers of all time and uh, I think she's amazing. Um, so I'm just going to be following along her recipe and seeing how easy it is for um, someone like you or me who's not a, um experienced baker to do. So this bake is actually three different recipes from her book. Um, so there's the all butter flaky um, pie crust and then obviously there's the apple and grape filling uh, crumble topping obviously on top and that's a really good thing I, I really like about Claire Taffets is that um, you can kind of take different recipes put them together and kind of create your own concoction if you will um, this one it, this one is just ready in her book so I'm just gonna test it out see how we do um, and go from there okay so if you want to know how to create a apple and grape crumble pie then stick around because I'm about to show you let me just have some tea first though because it's quite early in the morning for all the ingredients that you need um, in this video, by the way, I'm just going to put it all down uh, in the description box because it saves me having to say to you exactly what I've weighed out. I've already pre-weighed everything. Um, and it just makes more effort for me, so just use your eyes. So to start off the uh, flaky pie dough, um, it does say in the recipe book to um, put half of the unsalted butter in uh, ice water and pop it in the fridge. So I think it's a bit random, but we're going to do it because I'm going to follow the recipe and we have to see how easy it is to do. So let's try it. And then so that's in the fridge and then we'll just come back to that shortly. Um, put together all the all the dry ingredients. And um, this is a new bag of flour, so I'm not actually going to sieve it because it's I've just opened it, so it's fine. Um, so I'm just going to put all that in. Obviously, I've got the salt and uh, sugar that's going in as well. And I'm just going to give that a little whisk. So first we're going to uh, work the butter into the um, all dry ingredients. Um, so we use what we've got here and then after we'll just take what out, we'll take the butter out of the fridge and then just use that, I think along with some of the ice water. So I'm just going to throw in um, like a load of the butter really. It does say to kind of cut it into squares but like who's got time for that? No, it actually says in the book to smash it so into the flour so I don't know like just like or smash it, <laughs> whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> okay, that's smashed into the flour. And then it says flattening them, uh, quickly flattening them with your uh, finger and thumb until the large pieces are no bigger than the size of a pea. So, there we go. Um, by the way, uh, I have um, doubled this recipe for myself because I bought a um, really nice um, pie dish from Ikea the other day. Um, but it's not nine inches, it's like double that. I think it's like 16, so um, yes, I'm doubling this recipe. But obviously you don't have to. What I've put down in the description is just the normal recipe. So, so at the minute it actually looks very crumbly itself. Um, there's no like large clumps of butter. So once you've worked in all the butter, you should have a coarse um, yellow mixture filled with some larger pieces of butter and some very small bits. That's exactly what we've got. Okay, so next we need to remove the um, butter from the ice water in the fridge. Um, so we've got here, that's going to get incorporated as well. I'm just going to smash it into the bowl. And then five tablespoons of water as well. I think at first I need to kind of incorporate this butter and then I'll put the five tablespoons in. Okay, let's do that. It's been a while since I've done a video. I think it's been like over a year, maybe more than that, I'm not really sure. I just had this urge on my day off from work thinking I'm gonna do something productive today. Um, and I was gonna go for a, a really long walk, but the weather, um, we've just had this storm. So I decided against that, but actually I've just been outside to town to go and buy all the ingredients for this and it's really sunny outside. So kind of regretting that, but instead I thought I would make this video so you, my family and friends can, I don't know, bake something if you want, learn something new. Okay, so next, um, five tablespoons of water, um, obviously don't put the ice in there, but just, just the water. And now I think just give it a quick toss with a fork, um, don't use your hands again, you don't need to, because I've washed mine like three times now, so. Okay, so now I need to bring the dough together. Um, so I'm going to have to use my hands again. 
And then it did say to put it in a plastic wrap. I haven't got to put any plastic wrap. Um, I forgot to buy some, so I'm just going to put it in a, like a dish, a bowl. And then just leave it in the fridge to chill. So it's going to look really dry when you bring it together. Okay, so I'm just going to put it in this dish um, and then kind of flatten it out. Try and make it into a square. Um, it says to leave it to chill for uh, two hours. While that's chilling, uh, we'll just do the rest of the crumble. Cool. So I actually got this um, vanilla extract um, as a Christmas present. Um, it's vanilla from Bali, um, ethical and uh, organic. Um, and I think it's from this little company in Scotland that make it. I'll, I'll find out actually. But um, it's really cute. The, the vanilla is, is so good. Like it's so potent. But I don't even think I need. To, it says in the recipe to put two um, teaspoons, but I don't even think I need that much. But we'll see how we go. So the recipe says that it, we need uh, six sweet apples um, that are peeled and cored. <laughs> the apples have just gone over the floor, so it's a good job they're going to be peeled. I get why they need to be cored, but I don't understand why we need to peel them. Um, but the recipe says that we're going to do it, so let's just... Do it. I'm actually quite a clumsy person, so if I cut my wrists doing this, then feel free to put it on YouTube frames and claim a load of money. I thought that I wasn't going to need two hours to do this, but then obviously, because the uh, dough is supposed to take two hours to chill, but I feel like this is going to take me all afternoon, so. It feels a bit strange talking to myself. Before, I was like, you can't on, on a roll with the uh, recording and stuff. I kind of knew what to say. Um, I kind of got used to just talking to myself. I mean, it's not to myself anyway, but it's just a bit weird when there's like a camera on and at me. Um, yeah. Oh, I thought I was being um, attacked by a ghost last week or a demon, I'm not really sure, because um, there's a crack in the bedroom wall and I went to turn, it was just, it's just above the heater, this crack, and I went to turn the heater off before I went to bed, and the crack had gone. And I thought, oh, maybe I just dreamt that there was a crack, um, and sort of told everyone about it. Um, but that wasn't the case. I woke up the next morning, the crack was back. And I thought, what the hell? So it turns out that in old buildings, apparently, because um, this is an old building, and it's like just, it's been plastered over, um, but because it's just above the heater, Oh God, I'm doing this really dangerous. <laughs> I might actually cut my wrist. I've been doing this accidentally. <laughs> um, anyway, so it turns out that if you are, if it's no building and there's heat on, it can, I think, I don't know if it expands the wall or shrinks the wall, but basically when the heating is on, the crack disappears. Um, but when it's off, the crack comes back. But it was just really scary because it was Valentine's Day um, and I heard this like big thud above, um, from the flat above, and I thought at first, oh, maybe they're just, you know, getting freaky with it, and I thought, come on, like, ow, it was like one o'clock in the morning, and then when I woke up the next morning and had a shower, the stuff was still banging, but I've got, we've got one of these electric, um, electric, obviously it's electric hoover, um, but I mean, it's like a robot hoover that kind of just goes and does its own thing, and then, like, just goes home and charges itself when it's tired. But, so I thought maybe they've got one of those upstairs, but um, I don't know because I don't think that they actually last that long for hours and all night. It was a bit weird, but I still not know what that was. But they're just obviously very noisy people. I mean, they could have had a tumble dryer, but it didn't sound like it was a tumble dryer because it sounded like someone moving about. I thought that with a crack in my wall, I was definitely being haunted. I know that I'm stood here not moving, chatting to you, but this peel, <laughs> just the apple peels are just going all over the place, all over the floor. Speaking of food, but I might have to come out and suck them up, I don't know. No, I probably won't do that, I'll just, I'll just eat them. Oh, I've also started a, a new job since uh, I last did a video, spoke to you, whatever. To be fair, some of my family and friends, this probably is, has been the last time. The last time I spoke to you was probably the last video that I did. So um, yeah, I started a new job since then. 
and it's really cool. Okay, that is the smallest apple, that's practically a grape. <laughs> that's a fucking grape. <laughs> okay, so that's my apples um, peeled. Mmm, it kind of looks like a uh, Jackson Pollock. Mmm, I could... No, I can't do that. <laughs> Peel and cook down the Concord the grapes. Okay, it just say Concord grapes. I don't know what Concord grapes are because um, we're in England. I don't think we have Concord grapes. But if we do have Concord grapes here, then someone let me know because I've obviously just missed them. But I did go to Asda, so they probably wouldn't have them in there anyway. Working over a small saucepan. Grasp one grape at a time. <clears throat> okay, so over a small saucepan. Grasp the grape <laughs> at a time and squeeze it between your thumb and forefinger, stem end out. That's not done anything, is it? That's just too much to grab. <laughs> There's nothing in there. <laughs> Hang on, that's not right. Let me try it. Let me squeeze between your thumb and forefinger, stem end out. To pop the soft flesh into the sauce, but leaving the skin behind. Okay, that this. This is not as easy <laughs> as I thought it was going to be. That took a lot of effort. Um, shall I just put, okay, I'm just going to put the grape skin um, onto this plate because I think it, I think we do need it again. So I'm just going to do this whole little uh, pennant of grapes. I'm going to try slicing it with a knife and then just seeing if it pops. Okay, no, that doesn't. <laughs> I don't think this is right. <laughs> Who's got time to peel grapes? Should I just peel it with a peeler? Would that work? I mean, it does work, but that's. I'm not doing that. I think maybe it's the type of grapes that I bought. I just don't think I bought the right grapes. Do you know what? Screw this. So the grapes are just going to go in. I'm just going to mush them with my finger and thumb. Because we have to sieve it later anyway, so. I'm just going to put that all back in there. As much as I wanted to try and oh that was a bit gross. As much as I wanted to try and find, try and follow the recipe as much as I can, it's quite weirdly satisfying just standing here popping grapes, just living my best life right now. If anyone's watching this, and well, if anyone's watching this, then great. But <laughs> if if anyone's watching this and knows the reasons why we need to do this, um, like pop the grape out of its little ball sack then um please let me know why because i don't yet know this might be a mistake but i have got another load of grapes so i hope it's not a mistake but um yeah i think i'm just gonna leave the skin on because that's just too much time that one doesn't have right now okay it's just started raining actually outside so it's probably a good job i did to stay here and do this and not go for a walk tea and mojito at the same time so let's go back to the apples Okay, so now I need to toss the um, the apples that we've got um, in a bowl with the lemon juice, vanilla, and brown sugar. Um, so let's do that. This this step should have been done before the grape popping, but we didn't, so it hasn't. <laughs> okay, so let's just carry on with it. Um, okay, so the apples I'm just going to put into this bowl. So brown sugar is going in. Um, so two tablespoons of lemon juice. Vanilla extract, two teaspoons. Um, so just give them a toss. It smells a bit Christmassy, but I don't know if it's just the cinnamon and the vanilla. So we're just going to leave that to do their own thing, apparently. They can be sat next to the uh, grape mash that I've made, but if you're doing it properly, then you would probably have the nice grape pulp separated from the skins. Strain the flesh and combine with the skins and sugar. This might be, <laughs> this might be a challenge. Um, set a fire mesh sieve over the bowl with the reserved grape skins. Add the pulp to the sieve and press and scrape with a flexible spatula to force any pulp into the bowl below. Um, leaving only the seeds behind, transfer the pulp and grape skin mixture back into the same small saucepan. Oh, at least they do go together at the end. I think the whole point of this is just to extract the seed. Um, but they're seedless anyway. I think that's where I went wrong. I think I bought the wrong grapes. But if they're seedless, and the grape skins are on and they're going to go back together. I might just actually leave that 
and just pull this section off. Okay, so yeah, to put it back into the saucepan, just gotta see, add the granulated sugar, the granulated sugar and the cinnamon now. We've just got extra cinnamon in it because I'm a div. Um, okay, so reduce the apple juices. Pour any juices that have accumulated in the bowl. <laughs> it's that really weird, hang on. Pour any juices that have accumulated in the bowl with the apple mixture into the saucepan with grape skin mixture uh, and bring the, to a brisk simmer over a medium heat. Cook whisking occasionally until the mixture starts to look syrupy and is reduced by about one third. Yeah, wow, that's actually useful. That's actually really good. Okay, so I'll just leave it a little bit longer, maybe. Okay, so I think for the sake of um, fun, we haven't got enough. We're going to do more grapes because I'm just looking at the size. By the way, this is the pie dish that I've got from IKEA. IKEA still got the label on it. I think it was four pounds actually, so it's really good. But look how big it is. It's just way too big for what we need today. So I'm just going to put. Um, basically all of these grapes in here so we've got more mixture i've done more apples but i didn't want really to do any more grapes and like the recipe said so i'm going to be like out proportions apple to grapes so i'm just going to pour more grapes in and then um, we'll come back and carry on yeah how's my apple juice is looking um it looks the same amount of juice as it did 20 minutes ago <laughs> just five more minutes and then i guess well, we might as well start cooking this now right uh yeah so i'm just gonna um try and reduce the syrup uh, until it all goes a bit mushy, because at the minute the grapes are still quite hard. It just says to use a wooden spoon, but I have a fear of washing up wooden spoons, and I'm the only one here right now, so I'm just going to use a metal one because I can't physically wash it up, okay? It's, um... Like, I think of it as a phobia, but it's probably more just a, like, a fear of feeling the wet wood, and it's the same with, like, rolling pins, when you are in school and you are in baking class. Um, the, the feel of washing up like a wooden rolling pin is just like the worst. Okay, so the grapes have um, reduced down quite a lot. So um, I'm just going to let them cool down on the side for a little bit and then kind of start to assemble everything together. We'll finish off with the um, crumble topping first. Let's just do that. <laughs> so we're going to mix all the dry ingredients together. The flour, the oats, um, cinnamon, salt and brown sugar. So I need to combine, so right now we need to combine the three recipes and bring them together to make one. Um, so we've got a crumble, we've got our um, flaky pastry dough, which has been chilled. To be fair, it's probably been an hour and a half since uh, I put it in there. Okay, so I'm gonna roll out the dough and then line the dish with it. I hope I've got enough because it does look quite small now, but um, let's find out. Okay guys, so I have, um, it's, been, it's been a minute, but um, I've come back, I've rolled out my um, pastry dough. I did actually, I thought I was recording, but I wasn't recording, so I kind of missed a step of me rolling it out, basically what happened. I wasn't going to say anything, but then I thought it was really bad, but Charles, I think I broke the um, nice marble uh, rolling pin, so... Sorry, this was a gift and I feel really bad. I wasn't going to say anything to you, I was actually just going to buy another one, but I have already bought another one, so you can't tell me not to buy another one, but so I just want you to know. But I thought I was recording and I, it, I just rolled it, it just kind of went off the table, onto the floor, it didn't smash a tile, but um, yeah, I feel really sad about it now. My nice marble rolling pin. Anyway. So anyway, basically, um, so back to the dish. Um, so we've got our pie, uh, our dough rolled out, um, and it was a bit of a nightmare to kind of put it into the dish. But I think if you have a smaller dish, nine inches is what it recommends, then you should be fine. I think it's just because this is such a large dish, I couldn't quite flip it and um, flip it and flop it back into the dish because it was so. It was the the dough is too crumbly to kind of roll it nicely, and it's not it's not smooth. It's shaggy. Um, so yeah, I think that what I kind of had to do is just kind of cut it into courses and then put it into the dish and then lay it out so it's like moulded together. Um, so now obviously we need to assemble the dish. The, the oven is on to 180 degrees Celsius. Um, it's been on for about 20 minutes just heating up. It probably only needs a couple more minutes. But while it's doing that, I think we can combine the dishes together. Let's, should we do the apples first or should we do the grapes first? I don't really know what the 
the rule is here. It doesn't really say, it just says fill. Um, and by the looks of the picture, the grapes, and by the looks of the picture, the grapes are mixed in. Oh, we are supposed to mix them. Shall we mix them or shall we just leave them separated? No, I think we should mix them. No, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to layer the apples and then pour on the grape on top. That's what I'm going to do. I've made the executive decision and that's what's going to happen. So let's just nicely layer. I think actually if we layer the apples as well, it'll make a nice, um, what's the word? Kind of belt so it doesn't stop all the juice because I do want to put in some of the juice from the grapes on top. It'll stop it from seeping through the, um, the dough. Um, not that there's massive gaps in the dough, but I think it'll just it'll soak the apples will soak up the juice and it'll kind of be more flavoursome if you like. So this is where we're at right now. This is my well, right now it's just an apple tart. But, um, so I've got my nice uh, flaky buttery dough on the bottom. I've got my apples um, just sitting on top of that. Now I'm going to put in. Should I put this juice on top? of the grapes, it's all going to mix together. So I'm just basically going to put in the apple. I need to strain this, don't I? So I'm going to strain it first. All this pulp, the grape pulp, on top of the apples and spread it about. I know it's still dripping the juice a little bit, but I'm going to try and put the juice on top anyway. Okay, so this is where we're at. And now we need to put our crumble on top, which is the most exciting part. Um, I think I'll probably do more crumble than anything else. Well, actually, there'll be crumble there, but there we go. There's so much crumble. Okay, very good, very nice. So I'm just going to um, pop it in the oven. Okay, so it's gone in for 30 minutes. In 30 minutes, I'm going to take the foil off the top um, and then bake it for another half an hour to 40 minutes until you can see that there are thick um, bubblings around the sides, um, which I'll try to cover up. But if this is good, as the recipe says it's being, wait, if I followed the recipe as much as I should have, then there should be thick bubbling around the sides. So let's um, see. So in half an hour, I'll come back uh, and then we'll take off the foil and see how it's looking. See you then. Okay, guys, so I've got my final um, crumble. It's finished. It's been cooling for about 20, maybe, maybe 30 minutes. Um, so I think it's okay to eat now. I had a bit of issue getting it off the foil actually because um, yeah, it's gone really caramelised underneath where the syrup's kind of seeped out, gone underneath and then just stuck to the foil. But um, yeah, let's try it. Let's do it. I think the first, getting the first piece, like cake or pie or something, is always the hardest. But once you've got the first piece out, I'm just going to try it with a bit of ice cream uh, and see how it tastes. Let's do it. Oh, look at that ice cream. That looks so good. It's like a giant nipple. Okay, guys, here we go. This looks delicious. I am so excited. Um, it's apple and grape crumble. Here goes. Oh, my God. Holy cow. That is so good. It's, I think I'll probably put maybe a little bit too much uh, lemon juice in. What do we put the lemon juice in? The apples? Whatever we put the lemon juice in, maybe there's just a tad much because it's a little bit tart, but I quite like it because when you get the, um, when you have like a whole apple, because the apples are, they're quite large. I mean, they're so, like you can kind of see it. Like the apples are really sweet and they're quite large. So when you get a mouthful of apple, it kind of balances out with the um, the lime juice, so it's actually really good. Crumble, crumble is amazing. That's so good. I mean, that's a brilliant dessert. Check it out. Make this yourself. Tell me what you think. I think I made it quite complicated, actually, for everything that I did, but you could probably simplify it down and make it just so much easier. You don't have to use apples. Obviously, any, you can make any crumble you want, but this is just a recipe that I've done from Claire Sapix's book. Okay, so if you want to make this delicious dessert, then please you know, follow along, uh, let me know if you do make it or any of the other stuff that I've done. It's been a while since my last video. I'll probably do another video sometime soon. We'll see how I feel. Look at this freaking, the size of this is so big. I've got to go and share this with people. So I'm going to go, but have an amazing week and I will see you soon. Bye.